This is Einstein On, a research and medicine podcast. This segment is brought to you by Albert Einstein College of Medicine in collaboration with Montefiore Medical Center. Yeah. Ed and Celeste, they're so cute. 30 years after working on the front lines of the AIDS epidemic, social worker Anita Septimus and pediatrician Arie Rubenstein recall the faces and stories of the children who would alter the very course of their lives. You know, as a human being, not being able to protect children from death has to be the worst thing. You know, you want, you want to protect children. You want to, you know, they came to the world to live, to have a life. And the, the, seeing them dying was just such a, something, it, it, was, it just made me less human. In 1978, at Albert Einstein College of Medicine, REA began seeing children with a mysterious type of immune deficiency. And they came with swollen glands, enlarged liver and spleen, uh, followed by all kinds of bacterial infections. Initially, intravenous antibodies protected the children. But eventually, many children contracted the same opportunistic infections that had plagued or even killed their parents. Yet REA's reports that women may be transmitting an infectious agent to their children were not accepted by many in the scientific community. Social workers and physicians were uh, going to funerals um, and mourning the loss of these children. And you were really helpless in many instances, just watching the demise of those children. REA, a father of seven, was also moved by the children's emotional burden. Parents of other children were demonstrating the streets against having these children in schools. We were invited to testify in court whether the disease can be transmitted by a handshake or by a kiss or by a bite. So not only were these kids sick, they were totally isolated. REA established a pediatric aid center at Einstein's Weiler Hospital and worked with colleagues to open a clinical daycare center at Jacoby Medical Center. On the social services front, he secured private funding for summer camp in the Catskills. For us, it was uh, an experience to see how people who have a so-called fatal illness at that time, how they can pick up when you give them hope. And in fact, many of them, through hope, you can say, did much better when they came back from the camp. In 1983, REA's research persistence paid off. The NIH awarded him the first grant to study AIDS in women and children. Meanwhile, the number of babies, either orphaned or abandoned in local hospitals, following the sickness or deaths of their HIV-infected parents, continued to grow. REA recruited social worker Anita Septimus to initiate a family-centered model of AIDS treatment and support at Einstein. I think when Anita came to us, she was like a whirlwind, full of energy, full of enthusiasm, uh, who never quits. Despite her drive, Anita, a mother of four, considered leaving her post when seven children died within the first few months. But one day, during her commute to work, she had a revelation. I can't abandon those kids. They've been abandoned. They have been abandoned in the hospital. Their parents died on them. And I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to tell Dr. Anderson that I'm going to stay on and see what happened, you know? And after that, I really felt I couldn't turn my back on them. I just, year after year after year, I just felt nothing I would do would mean as much as this for me. REA and his colleagues made numerous research contributions in the field. In 1986, they demonstrated that in pregnant women with HIV, transmission of the virus can occur in utero. Two years later, the NIH established seven centers for AIDS research, one at Einstein, led by REA. In 2003, Montefiore Medical Center, the university hospital for Einstein, took over the family-centered AIDS program, where Anita and REA still work. Today, the outlook for pregnant women with HIV is a world away from 1978. Still, for Penelope Becker, a computer engineer from South Africa, the surprise diagnosis in 2008 that she was HIV positive was devastating. I had a lot of plans in my life, like uh, bright future ahead, family, you know, getting married and everything. And I just thought everything is like gone. But Penelope's dreams were far from over. She married Jeffrey Becker, a social worker who is also HIV positive. 
When she became pregnant, her gynecologist referred her to obstetrician Rodney Wright, director of HIV programs at Montefiore, who quickly adjusted Penelope's medications. What I tell a patient when they first present to me HIV positive and pregnant is that the chances of the baby getting HIV from them is extremely low as long as they're on a, a regimen that's effective and safe during pregnancy, that they're able to achieve an undetectable viral load, and they're able to give their baby AZT for six weeks after it's born. When I went to Dr. Wright, he switched me to these two. Penelope followed doctor's orders, and after she gave birth to son Quentin, administered the HIV medication AZT. I'm just grateful that I have Quentin Quentin is HIV negative and healthy, and he's just my son. I'm happy. You know, I'm so happy. It's like, I mean, the other page of my life has shut down, and the other page of my life has been open. Rodney says none of the hundreds of HIV-positive pregnant women he's treated who have followed the drug regimen have transmitted the virus to their children. So now that we're actually able to save lives, um, we're actually able to keep babies from becoming HIV infected, it brings so much joy to my heart um, to be able to see those healthy HIV negative babies on a daily basis. Rodney also conducts HIV research at Einstein and Montefiore and shares his knowledge about HIV and pregnancy with Einstein medical students. Back in the early 1990s, uh, prevalence rates, uh, transmission rates were about 25% for mother to child, and now we're down to less than 2%. Through education, research, and passion, Einstein and Montefiore researchers and physicians continue to make an impact, helping to transform a disease that was once a death sentence into a chronic but manageable condition. You see the light? And enabling the dreams of many to still come true. Yeah, because I wanted to have kids in the future. So I'm happy. We're just excited. It's such a joy.